Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about binding. Now I know we talk about binding a lot um, and I've done a bunch of videos on the tools that we use and some of the tricks that we use to, to bind and make binding shoot fly, make binding a little bit easier for y'all, but I uh, wanted to talk to you about a project that I've been working on and I've gotten several questions about our binding routing contraption. So I wanted to uh, give you guys a little bit of a close look at that and show it to you in action. So, <clears throat> um, a while ago I did a video about uh, replicating this Fernandez revolver body um, with the exception of this battery component here. It won't have that. And uh, we want to put a top on this. So I used the body itself to build these templates uh, for my pin router and uh, they're backwards because, not because it's a left-handed guitar, but because the pin router works backward, meaning that this stuff here follows the pin and then it cuts out the body. Well, uh, my customer, Alan, who's an awfully cool guy, sent me some, um, some quilt maple for the top and here it is, front and back. Now, we've got a few more things to do, but the next step is binding. So obviously we have to cut the um, you know the, the belly contour here, and then right in the neck joint, neck pocket area, there's a little ground down spot, and I want to drill for uh, ferrules as well. So anyway, but the next step is binding, and as you can see here, this is some fancified quilt maple. This isn't a veneer. Well, it is a veneer in that it's not you know a half inch thick. It's an eighth inch thick and uh, it's going to look really, really nice. We are going to bind this today. So this is our binding router contraption and we're going to use this to cut the binding channel for um, Alan's guitar. Now what this is, is it's a laminate trimmer. In this case it's a rigid, but you know any laminate trimmer will work. And we've got the Stumac binding cutter bit already installed. And um, we built this, we actually reverse engineered this from the Stumac tool. Uh, I, had a, I had a previous binding contraption that I made a video on many, many uh, years ago. You can go back and watch that if you want. It actually moved the cutter around the body which stayed still and this contraption, because my shop is such a gigantic mess and I have a limited footprint, this is a lot smaller tool and it, it still rides up and down um, but you move the body under the, the, the device and it saves a lot of room. So, uh, we reverse engineered this, like I said, from the uh, Strip McDonald unit that they have, and we just looked at some pictures and figured, well, hey, we could do that too. And uh, we used a company called Open Builds to uh, source all of our Unistrut and um, this uh, gantry plate and these little wheels that go on um, this track here. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below to Open Builds <clears throat> so you guys can have a look and see what uh, uh, what things you can buy from Open Builds to help you make some tools too. So let me go ahead and clamp this down to the table and I'm going to give you a close up view of what's going on here. Okay, so here is the, uh, as you can see, this is my binding router contraption and here's the body that we were talking about. And I just have it clamped to my, um, to my router table and that works just fine because the router table is flat and I can use the electricity outlet on my router table to plug in my little binding router and everything is wonderful. So, um, <clears throat> it's like I said, it starts out with this rigid laminate trimmer which is just fairly regular and then um, I, uh, I was able to repurpose the, uh, the, the plate that it came with and I built this new piece here out of um, half inch uh, Lexan and as you can see right here, it's got kind of this curvy thing here and that allows the body to kind of ride, well, it's easier to do it when I'm not holding the camera, but it allows the body to ride on, um, on the contours of, see now here, now see it's cutting, it would be, if it was turning, if it was running, it would be cutting on the, um, the, uh, the, the contour there and the binding channel will, will work just fine. So it allows the it allows the, the piece to ride on the contour of the guitar. So uh, and this was a really low tech arrangement. Um, 
I, uh, I, I just went ahead and glued this, these two pieces of Lexan together with acetone and some clamps. And uh, then Brain Surgery Kevin made me this little guy here, which is just a piece of, I don't know if you can see it there. It's just a piece of round stock that we milled a flat on and then screwed it to this gantry plate from Open Bills. Now, you don't have to do it like I did, um, but this was, this was from our previous tool, so uh, it just made sense to, to reuse that. So, and then we have a piece of, uh, we have a piece of Unistrut here and some, uh, some rail section that these wheels glide on. Now, if you will, the astute observer will notice that I have this uh, bungee cord on here, and that's just kind of to see how the, the, the unit kind of falls away from the, the device a little bit. It's got, it's got some play. So I just like to put this bungee cord on here. It kind of keeps everything kind of keeps everything the same. Again, a low-tech solution to a low-tech problem. So, um, now let's talk a little bit about the router bits that we're going to use. All right, as you can see here, this is the Stumac binding router bit, and it's just a rabbiting bit with a bearing that uh, can be replaced. Here is a, you can kind of see here, is a little bit smaller diameter bearing if you're doing wider binding. So the idea is that this, um, this bearing follows the the um, the edge of the instrument, and then the there we go, and then the cutting bit actually cuts a little deeper than uh, than than the the bit. If you can see what I'm talking about here, so it's not a flush trim operation because it is in fact cutting a rabbit. Now um, these blades from Stumac are pretty cool. Um, but, you know, Stumac doesn't have the market cornered on rabbiting bits. Um, you can pretty much get away, you could, you could have any bit, as long as it had a, a bearing uh, attachment point, and you could put a smaller diameter bearing than the cutting bit, and, um, you know, that would be, that would work just fine. Um, the Stumac bits are nice because I get binding from Stumac, it just makes life easy, guys. Um, and again, Stumac, if you're listening, I would love to be a shill for you. Some of you might think I already am. So um, what we're going to do now is we are actually going to um, put the right size bearing on the, um, onto the cutter because we're going to put binding that's about 90 thousandths thick on this guitar, same thickness as you would use on, say, like a Les Paul. And um, yeah, so that's going to be the hot setup. Oh, the reason we're using 90 thousandths thick binding is because Alan is going to paint this himself and he's going to stain it uh, with like a, a deep stain and I wanted to give him some binding that uh, was was big enough that he could actually scrape that back because it's a real pain to uh, to scrape back super thin binding. So it's a it's a bummer to uh, to use especially on as curvy and as pointy as some of these horns are, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of a um, lot of slow going to uh, to bind this, but it's going to be worth it. And he's going to dig it, and he's going to have nice thick cream binding, and that's going to be cool. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to make sure I got the right bearing on the uh, the cutter, and uh, then we're going to route for binding. Okay, it's always a good idea to use a scrap piece of lumber and test the um, the depth of cut to make sure that you have the right depth for the binding that you are using. So I'm gonna use this scrap piece of mahogany here and uh, we're gonna make a few test passes and make sure that the binding that we are using, in this case, it's a quarter inch thick. Uh, we wanna make sure we, uh, we have as much binding showing as possible, so we're gonna make the cut about a quarter of an inch deep. So we're gonna test that now. All right, as you can see, my binding looks pretty good, and it's, uh, I think our bit is adjusted properly. It's, it's just, the binding's just a little bit proud right here, just like I can just barely get my fingernail on the top of it, which is ideal. And I'm looking good here. I got the right size bearing because my binding fits nice and flush there. So we are ready to do this body. Let's check it out. Alright, 
as you can see, we now have a nice channel for our binding. And what's more, it has followed the contour of the forearm cut and it's gonna be totally cool. So the next step is binding and we're gonna do that exactly the same as we have done in the past on so many other binding jobs. Um, we're gonna go ahead and tape this in place. We'll wick acetone in between the binding and the wood and we'll use the, um, the uh, uh, chemical reaction to glue the, uh, the binding to the board. And the reason that works, capillary action. It's a chemical reaction when the acetone melts the plastic. And the reason it wicks in there is from capillary action. But you guys already knew that because you already watched the other video. So um, I am not going to bore you with the uh, binding part for this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. But guys, if you have any questions about what we did with um, the, uh, our binding contraption or how we made the binding contraption, uh, remember I'm gonna leave some uh, links to some products and some other pages, some you know places where you can buy some of this stuff, um, links to Amazon, and if you buy stuff from our links to Amazon, we get you know three or four cents. So um, if you have any questions though, above and beyond that, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. Um, I'm also supposed to tell you that subscribing is not enough. You have to click the little bell. I, I don't know what that means, but I've been doing that on channels that uh, that I subscribe to, so. Um, Eh, whatever. Uh, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to check out our Patreon page and consider becoming a member over there. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you cool content like this. And uh, there's a lot of neat stuff uh, for Patreon members as well. Um, and by the way, Patreon members, if you haven't gotten your shirts yet, those of you who are in that tier, um, I've got shirts. I, just resend me the size because, you know, it's, this is a weird disconnect between Patreon and sizing and if you haven't gotten your Patreon shirt yet, uh, send me an email to texastoastmat at gmail.com and I'll get you your shirt on the way. Uh, remember to give me your size. So if you can't join Patreon, we totally get it. Um, feel free to share this video as many places as y'all want. That really helps us out a bunch. So um, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching everybody. Oh, baby, I can tell you.